Hey guys, welcome back to Fake Card Friday. So today we're looking at a fairly simple card, but the question is, uh, would you play it? So this is Zephin, 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 I think that's what it's called, Zephin the Oceanic Monarch. So it is a monarch, of course. It is a level six water uh, sea serpent effect monster with 2400 attack and 1000 defense. So same stats, it's a monarch, it's a monarch. So of course all the monarchs have an effect when they're tribute summoned. So we're gonna go ahead and go over this monster's effect and determine whether this, it's a it's good or b will it if it existed will it be uh, ran? All right. So this card says when this card is tribute summoned, you can target one monster and spell a trap card on the field. Return those targets to the hand. Now that's pretty good. I must say that's pretty good. You know, being able to go ahead and uh, bounce back double. You know, so. The problem is, is is if you're taking into consideration where you take the cards on your opponent's field and return into the hand, depending on what you balance, it's technically a neg. Because of course, when you tribute, you neg. You you tribute you neg. That's the whole thing with monks with monarchs is that yes, you neg when you tribute, but the monarch's effects will allow you to you know even out with your opponent, which makes them not terrible. So, you know, we have like the you know the top monarchs like you know Caius and Ryza. And Ryza can go ahead and spin a card back to the top of the deck, which uh, you know, not only makes your opponent neg by, you know, them losing a card in the field because it goes to the top of the deck, but then they're going to draw into that same card. So then you actually know what your opponent's going to draw. Kais, of course, you get to banish a card. So, you know, the best place you can send something is back to the deck or banishing it. Those are the two best places you can send something in Yu-Gi-Oh. This guy in the hand returns the cards to the hand. So, uh, you know, by bouncing a monster, let's, say, let's go with monster. Monster, return monster to the hand. It really depends on what monster you're returning, you know. You know, if you're sending, like, you know, a monster that was special summoned from the extra deck, then yeah, sure, go ahead and do that. That's cool. But if you're returning a monster that's just going to go back to the hand and that can be summoned again next turn, then it may not be the wisest of plays unless you're going for game. So, for example, let's say your opponent has, um, I'm trying to think of a good example, Stratos. All right. Would you want to summon this guy to put Stratos back in your opponent's hand? Why? So that I can just summon it again and search again? You know, it may not be the wisest place. You know, Mathematician, you know, if they return Mathematician, they could just, you know, summon Mathematician, send another monster. So it really depends on what monster you're bouncing, you know. If you're bouncing, a, you know, a high-level monster that requires your opponent to uh, tribute or found some way to special summon it, then that may not be terrible either, you know. But it really depends on what monster you're bouncing. Like I said, if it's something special summoned from the extra deck, then sure, more power to you. If you're going to go ahead and bounce a, uh, you know, a window or a, um, or a construct or a, uh, or a Dante, then, you know, sure. But if all you're literally doing is bouncing back a cleave put monster back to their hand, why? So they could pedal somebody or normal summon it back the next turn? Not the wisest of plays, you know. Especially if the monster is equipped with Sacrifice, because then you would bounce back the monster, Sacrifice would unequip, and then it would go off at the graveyard, and then they'd get to search, so it may not be the best play there. But uh, let's go ahead and look at uh, Spell a Trap on the field. So, Spell a Trap on the field, they're gonna, it's going to return to the hand, and they're going to get to play it again next turn. So, the whole bouncing of the Spell a Trap card may not be the best, depending on you know, what's being bounced back. You know, if you're, like, bouncing back with vanities and then you have more special summons this turn, then, hey, more power to you. But just being keep in mind that that vanity is going to get reset and played on you again. So that may not be the best of the plays. You know, if it was, like, target a monster, spin it back, and then target a spell, trap card, and fill it, and destroy, then maybe we could talk. Maybe we could, like, bounce back a cleat put and then destroy the tool. You know, that way they wouldn't be able to uh, pen them something unless they have another t uh, tool or scout. But... You know, just returning a spell trap card to the hand, uh, you know, they can just always reset it or replay it next turn. So, you know, and like I said, unless you're going for pushing for game and you're going to open up the floodgates, like your opponent has like 2,400 or less and they have a monster, a set monster and a set spell trap and you go tribute, summon this guy, bounce that monster, bounce that spell trap, 24 game, the whole bouncing of the spell or trap may not be the best. It may not. You know, it's just like, um, uh, um, burning this cow cab where he bounces a set spell or trap uh, You know the opponent could just reset the card. So it's not even the best now And with cow cab it says set spell or trap this guy says, uh, you know Just spell or trap period. So, you know, you know You can even uh, doesn't specify 
So literally, you could return one of your own spells and traps if you wanted to. If you wanted to. So, you know, you could, like, if you have vanities, you can, like, return it. You know, and set reset it later. But, you know, it's not terrible. It's not terrible. So the question is, would this guy be ran if he existed? Ah. Uh, I just feel that... You know, you won for, depending on what you bounce back, that's a one for one. I kind of feel like Ryza and Caius do a better job than you have, like, Majesty's Fiend and Vanity Fiend. So I, I feel like when it comes to tribute summoning, this guy's kind of far down on the totem pole. I don't see it. I don't see it. So tell me what you guys think about this guy. Um, let me see if anybody said anything about it. All right, someone commented and said, um... Uh, this is a neg one. Why would anyone run this over Mobius? All right, and the, the person respond mostly because it hits monsters, which if they, uh, which you no know, monsters, like rise up, bounce more, uh, blah 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 blah. It's a solid monarch, but it simply loses to the three of monarchs to so actually get rid of stuff. That's uh, you know that's what I would say. Uh, you know, unless you're pushing for game, it's really not worth it. Uh, it would be a good card in this valley due. To its either side of the field, so you know, I guess that's the way someone else commented. And that's pretty much it. So I'd say I'd say no. I'd say that people wouldn't run it. And the reason why people wouldn't run it is because um, it's just outclassed. It's outclassed by it's outclassed by Caius. It's outclassed by Ryza, Majesty Fiend, Vanity Fiend. Yeah, it's just outclassed. So you know, just like a lot of the other monarchs, which are not bad, they're just outclassed, so they don't get ran. All right, so tell me what you guys think about uh, Zephin in the comment section below. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this uh, episode of Freak Craft Friday. It's a simple one, just a simple one. We'll try to get more crazy with it next week. All right, so I hope that you guys enjoyed. So thanks for watching, thanks for all the support, and I'll see you guys next Friday with another fake card to look at. Thanks for watching.